Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done a podcast about marriage. And uh, so I uh, wanted to, to do another one. Uh, so right off the bat, two resources that will really help uh, improve your marriage, strengthen your, your marriage. Uh, one is a workbook that just came out uh, last month, uh, December 2022. Super excited about this one. The Hold Me Tight Workbook, A Couple's Guide for a Lifetime of Love by Dr. Sue Johnson. And uh, the, the book, Hold Me Tight, uh, it has uh, good conversations uh, to work through, to repair, to heal, to improve uh, your marriage uh, based on emotionally focused therapy. And so I uh, definitely encourage you to get the, the Hold Me Tight workbook. And um, if you haven't already read this, um, Nonviolent Communication uh, by Marshall Rosenberg. Um, one, uh, a few really helpful things about nonviolent communication. One is uh, learning how to take responsibility for your feelings and then learning how to request instead of demand uh, what you need or, and I think he says, uh, what would enrich your life. So taking responsibility for your feelings, but requesting, learning how to request what you want, what you need. Um, it, he also, it also teaches more about the, the power of empathy uh, learning how to identify and express your feelings. Um, and so, yes, uh, those are two very helpful books. Uh, another helpful resource that I recommend all the time is cloudtownsend.com, uh, uh, the, the video uh, channel uh, on relationships. Um, it talks about boundaries. It talks about uh, blame. It talks about taking responsibility. Um um, explains the difference between being responsible to your partner, to others, or being responsible for other people. Um, and such an important uh, uh, truth or principle to understand uh, when it comes to relationships and, and marriage. Um, so th those are a few resources right off the bat that I, I want you guys to be aware of. Uh, so uh, how are you doing? Uh, here at the start of 2023 in your relationship or marriage. Um, next week, going to be participating in a couples event uh, for a Maga Day Central community. And um, it's it's just a, a time, a morning for couples to um, spend together, um, turning towards each other and connecting. And one of the things that we were, we, we've got three breakout sessions. One of the things that we talk about is distance, disconnection, and how to overcome uh, disconnection. And um, I'm going to do a workshop on distraction and how screen time, smartphones, social media can distract us from um, each other, from connecting. I talk about um, the effects of, of screen time the effects of YouTube, uh, or not YouTube, well, yes, YouTube, but the effects of Netflix in the evening, the effects, the effects of smartphones um, on relationships like almost every day, every day. Um, uh, half the week I do health coaching. So I talk about health coaching and how that um, smartphones are affecting bedtime routine, um, morning routine, how it's affecting sleep, um, how it distracts, not just from relationships, but it restricts uh, it distracts from the relate, uh, the life that you want to live and the healthy habits that you want to, um, be consistent in and, or, um, or improve or be more consistent, um, or do more. Um, and, uh, so, uh, yeah, the, that we're, we're doing that this week. Um, but you might not be in the area. So I uh, want to say a little bit about that. Uh, hopefully it'll encourage you. Um, and then, um, with how things are going in your relationship, how do you decide, um, if your marriage needs a date night, if it needs coaching, um, uh, and like a pastoral counseling or like a, a life group or enrichment, marriage enrichment, uh, event, or how do you know when your, your, your marriage needs marriage counseling, um, couples counseling, um, Let's start, I'll just say a little bit more about distance and get disconnection and, and distraction. 
So um, Julie and I were going to be married uh, 29 years this May. So um, seasons of, dis uh, you know, feeling distant, feel feeling closer. Um, you know, it's like an accordion, like you move in and out. Um, uh, you, you pull away, you pull, you pull close. Um, so life can happen to your marriage. Um, so you have to intentionally bridge that distance, bridge that gap. And um, Roxy, one of the therapists, is going to talk about like developing daily and week weekly and monthly rituals of connection and coming back together. So, um, you know, sometimes it's intentional, you know, it's the season, you know, that you're going to be busy. Um, and so even though it's hard, you, you, you kind of mutually agree, uh, that, that it's just gonna, you know, you know, like if you're, if you have a job that requires you to travel, you have to be away. Um, or, um, if you just are in a season where you're focused on uh, the kids or work, um, it's hard, um, but it's easier to manage when you uh, uh, agree um, to it. Um, but sometimes the distance um, happens even if you don't agree to it, or you have seasons where you're more distant than you were expecting. It's even harder um, it, it, at work pulls you away. Like, um, so, uh, working shift work is one way that you can, uh, feel more distant that where you're not spending as much time together as you used to. And it's not just the time away, uh, at work. If you work graveyard or swing, like the, uh, sh uh, rotating shift, swing, sh uh, swing shift, shift work, is exhausting too. So it's not just the time that you're away at the job, but when you're at home, like be feeling like a zombie because you're exhausted and you're trying to recover from working shift work, that can um, separate you as well. Another thing that can, uh, so distance. So there's, it's not like there's a conflict, uh, a resentment or hurt or a wall that's in between you. It's just that you're, you're far apart. You feel far apart. You don't feel close. Um, so that's distance disconnection. I'm speaking more about emotional disconnection where it's not just that you haven't been spending time together. You might spend a lot of time together. Um, like for example, the last couple of years working from home, you might be around, um, in the same space, but are you emotionally connected? And a lot of people, they can spend a lot of time around each other but they can feel very far apart. They, they can, uh, you know, uh, things can be on the surface. You, you can feel lonely. You can feel neglected. You can feel unseen. Um, even if you spend a lot of time together, I work with a lot of couples, um, uh, in coaching and counseling, um, learning how to do retirement, um, and, um, or empty nest. And so, uh, you, you can develop a homeostasis kind of like, um, you know, things are fine. Things are good. Things are okay. Um, manageable because you spend 30, 50 hours, uh, 40, 50 hours away from each other because of your work schedules. And then, um, you know, when you retire and then you're thrust into spending a whole bunch more time together than you're used to, that's a big adjustment. And you have to learn uh, how to be friends uh, again or find new uh, ways of connecting or um, and um, learn how to negotiate um, boundaries and how much time you want to spend together, how much time you need uh, apart. Um, and so that, that can be tricky if you don't have good communication skills. Um, so... Uh, a little bit more about disconnection. So sometimes disconnection can happen from hurt. Um, so that can come from uh, selfishness. Um, that can come from neglect. That can come from uh, being hurt and disappointed. And so 
there can be some resentment or offense and um it can be from like not just disappointment but like someone being irresponsible and uh, trust being broken so it can there can be a, a rupture in the relationship in the the secure uh attachment uh connection that that you have so that um and then uh, another form of disconnection can be um, it, if one or both of you have trouble moving beyond small talk and going below the surface and really being transparent and honest and open about what's really going on inside. And so sometimes that can come from distance. That can come from like, just a habit of not uh, checking in and connecting. And then after a while, it, when you start avoid, it can start, it can go from um, being awkward to cre causing anxiety and causing avoidance where, um, where it can be difficult to talk about easy things, hard things and everything in between. Uh, so, you can develop a habit of just turning to other things uh, day to day in the week, uh, getting on phones, playing games, going out to the garage, working on projects, working on crafts, uh, working on hobbies, and get out of the habit of spending time together, enjoying time together, enjoying things together. Um, uh, when 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 Julie and I were engaged, uh, she uh, she grew up in Grants Pass. We live in Portland. It's like four or five hours away, and so sometimes we would drive down. And I I loved um, doing road trip or, or driving three four or five hours uh, with her, and we would always fill the time. Uh, that, you know, this was before smartphones. Um, we. We, we would just talk and maybe you remember those times in your relationship where hours would fly by. Um, it's kind of funny, like e even uh, guys or gals uh, who tend to be quiet and not really verbal processors um, or talk much when you're dating, when you're engaged and everything's exciting and new and, you know, the, the, the person that you fall in love with is just the most amazing person. And you just want to learn everything about them and know everything about them. And uh, you're just curious and excited to get to know them better um, and spend time with them. You, you could talk, you could open up, you could listen. Um, but for different reasons, that goes away um, or slips away um, because we allow it. Um, uh, you know, whether it's busyness or um, a lack of intentionally pursuing, continuing to pursue the, the, the heart of our partner, of our spouse. Um, so disconnection, um, you know, di dis distance can be uh, painful and feel lonely, but disconnection can, is even more so. The other thing, is distraction and distraction maybe doesn't feel uh, painful till you stop and realize like, wow, like um, I'm th this distraction um, is pulling me away from uh, my, my, my relationship. Um, I'm, I'm, f I'm giving my time, my energy, my focus to things that are not as that aren't as important to me um and 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 that's the power of habit that's the power of uh, addictive things um is sometimes you don't intend to get drawn away um but but it ends up happening and so it can be helpful to talk about how are we doing with distraction and well, what are ways we can turn our attention and energy and focus 
back towards each other. Um, I, I, I say this uh, often. You've probably heard this if you've listened to the podcast. You know, like uh, the idea of yours, mine, and ours. Like there's your things that you're uh, focused on, your priorities, your responsibilities. Um, and uh, th there's also your issues, uh, your struggles, your distractions, your temptations. And there's mine. There's the things that um, are important to me, that are, are uh, higher on my values, my priorities, my responsibilities. Um and, you know, we're, we, we work on those different things, but do we have a comp, yours, mine, ours, do we have a mission and a focus and a purpose together as a couple as well? Um, and so sometimes we have, we, we have our individual identities, our individual assignments, like maybe uh, uh, communities that we connect with. For example, my, my wife, she's a teacher. Uh, most of her friends are her fellow teachers. She spends most of her time um, with her her um, her teachers and her students, um, and gives a lot of time and attention and um, you know um, towards uh, building that community and 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 teaching her students. Um, uh, but f making sure that you you have some common um things that you enjoy to, together um and are you carving out time and making space to do that regularly um that that can really help okay um not going to go long on this podcast hope you're doing well here at the start of 2023 so oh uh before I, i'm going to read i'm going to end this podcast with a, a blog post uh about uh mindset uh, if you choose to start marriage counseling. Um, but uh, just a quick thought. Um, sometimes the distance and distant connection is easily resolved. So sometimes it's a matter of like checking in with each other, touching base, reminding uh, yourself, reminding each other, like, hey, we, you know, we haven't done date night for a long time. Or um, it could be, we haven't done the thing that we like to do um, in, in a while. Um, what do you think about doing that this month, putting it on the calendar? Um, I would love to do that. Um, what do you think? How do you feel about how we're doing with uh, communication and connection lately? Or it might be as um, simple as saying, hey, I miss you. Um, uh, you know, let's, let's go on a date. I would love to go for a walk with you. Um, and, um, so, so sometimes it's as easy as just saying, Hey, you know, um, um, connecting, reaching out, initiating, uh, to bridge that, that, that gap, that distance, um, if, if there with disconnection, um, risking vulnerability, opening up and being a little more transparent, um, that can be a little scarier because um, there's some risk in, in uh, that you might be rejected. So see in, in couples um, uh, sometimes with personality difference or different attachment styles, like some, someone can be a withdraw drawer and some can, someone can be a pursuer. And some, so um, sometimes in couples, someone might have an anxious attachment style and someone might be more avoidant. Um, and so, uh, the, someone who has an anxious attachment style might feel, um, tend to feel more, uh, insecure, uh, tend to have less of a tolerance for disconnection and, um, uh, can pursue and want more from the other person. And, uh, on the other side of that, yeah, um, sometimes going deeper, can, can feel risky. So you can tend to avoid uh, conflict or hard things or, or intimacy or being close. And so that, that can be a challenging uh, dynamic uh, to overcome. So learning more um, about the dance um, and, and like kind of taming your cycles of um, 
the, the cycle that you can get into the negative cycles of avoidance and pursuit um, through this workbook, the Hold Me Tight workbook um, uh, created for connection or Hold Me Tight or the, the, the books uh, that, that are um, teach you the basics of EFT as well. Uh, that, that, that can help. Um, there are also um, helpful podcasts on uh, on marriage, and I'll, I'll put a few uh, in the show notes. And uh, so learning together and inviting each other to say, hey, let's prioritize our marriage. Um, you know, we're, um, it's not that we're, uh, um, we're in trouble, we're in crisis, uh, but, you know, being vulnerable and maybe saying like, I'd, I'd like to, to grow stronger. I'd like to um, grow deeper. Um, uh, love you. I think we're doing okay, but there's maybe there's some roof, room for improvement in different areas. It could be with parenting. It could be with uh, emotional intimacy. It could be, uh, I'm not completely satisfied or happy with how we spend our evenings. Um, I'm wanting more uh, with our sexual intimacy. And, um, you know, I'd like to talk about that more, explore that more, um, feeling frustrated or disconnected with how we're doing with finances and it's causing me lots of stress. Um, so sometimes clearing the air about, um, you know, harder things, things, uh, topics that might, you might have differences in that can help. Um, so spending a little more time together, risking, um, difficult or, um, uh, conversations or risking conflict. Then the third thing is maybe you've, you've tried all those things. Maybe you've tried prayer. Maybe you've tried, um, uh, you know, learning about how to communicate better. And, um, it, it's, it's, you still feel stuck or when, um, when a coach or a counselor can be helpful is when you try to communicate and you feel worse and you feel further apart than when you started, um, then that can be a good time to bring someone in to help you have those conversations more uh, productively. Um, sometimes I'll say this, you know, and every couple is different and it depends on what's difficult and, and, you know, um, uh, but a lot of couples can make huge improvements, um, in, in their relationship, in their communication and conflict resolution and their connection in like four sessions of, of couples counseling, um, four to six uh, sessions. And, uh, and I've even seen couples that have been come in very discouraged, very hurt, feeling very misunderstood, um, like really clear the air and improve how they feel, feel much more hopeful. Um, and then much uh, more uh, willing to kind of open up and, and, and let their, their, their defenses and their anger down um, in, in like, two, two sessions sometimes. Um, cause then that, because they're finally opening up and, and kind of, um, talking about what they need to talk about. Okay. So hope that encourages you. Um, feel free to write, uh, in the comments, uh, on the YouTube channel or on the, uh, courage coaching and counseling Facebook group. If you have any comments. All right. So, uh, going to end with this. This is a blog post I wrote a little bit ago. It's on marriage and, and being great together. All right, let's, let's be great together. It's a statement that's been on my mind all week as my wife and I prepare to talk to our church friends this Sunday about marriage, about our marriage. I talk about marriage every week with my counseling clients, but it's not something I have the chance to do with my wife. She sent me a list of these of things that she wants to share, things that she's learned, things she does, things she thinks will be helpful. And when I read it, it was a reminder of what is great about her, about the moments when our life is great. Not perfect, but, but great. 
Let's be great together, babe. We don't often say that, but it's essentially what we hope for when we asked or answered the question, will you marry me? It's essentially what we said when we stood up in front of God, our family and friends and chose each other and said, I do. We want to be a great husband, a great wife for our spouse. We offered our best and promised our life. We want to be a great partner or parent uh, deep down inside, even if we are bold enough to say it out loud. Our confidence, motivation, and desire to be great gets stolen away somewhere along the way. We settle for less. When it gets hard, we lose hope. We have our tantrum when things don't turn out the way we wanted, or we withdraw, or turn to work, or the kids, or our smartphones and social media. We start to believe that the pain and loneliness in the present are stronger or more real than the promise and the love at the start. We'd settle for healthy or an end to the loneliness or pain. We might scoff at the idea of, of great when it feels so miserable, so broken. We might scoff at the idea of great, um, but if we shoot for great, we might get it. We certainly won't get there if we don't attempt it. Doesn't she deserve me trying? Doesn't he deserve me trying? Don't we deserve the effort? It's where we started with the promise of I do. Will you go to counseling with me? It's not a question we think we'll ever have to ask or answer. It's scary to say I will. It's scary to think they'll tell you no. But you were scared on your wedding day when you said I do. You promised that day to be faithful. In as many words, you promised that you would do what it takes. It's not a guilt trip to hold you and your spouse to your promise to honor the covenant you made. One of the best, hardest things about marriage is when your spouse calls out your best. There can be more than one beginning to marriage when you walk out of the church hand in hand after saying I do. And when you walk into the counseling room hand in hand and still say I do. Here are a few things that can help you make the most of counseling if you choose to go. Things to tell yourself to prepare. I will go. I want to make this work. I will go to learn to understand. I will try. I will be honest. I won't attack you. I love you. Or I want to love you again. I will do what it takes. I will look for what works, not what won't. I will work. I will listen. I will be patient. I will look for my part of the problems and take responsibility. I, I will change. I will talk about my hurts and fears. I will apologize as needed. I will forgive if necessary. I will try to trust you more. Let's go be great again. I hope you guys are doing okay. Um, and wherever you're at in your marriage, in your relationship, uh, I hope this year will be a good one that, um, that you'll grow even closer that, uh, if you're hurting, you'll, you'll experience some healing. Uh, if you're feeling distant, that you'll be able to draw closer. If you're feeling disconnected, you'll be able to take those walls down and, and connect. Um, if your marriage is uh, heading in the wrong direction, I hope it, it'll, um, you'll, you'll be able to see what you need to steer it back where it needs to be. 
Um, if you're not on the same page and moving in different directions, I hope that you'll be able to um, come together and figure out how to get back on the same page um, and realign and uh, your hearts, uh, the direction your lives are going. And yeah, I hope that you'll have a great year and a great marriage.